Hello and welcome to my Moth Talk video. I haven't done one of these before, but I wanted to talk a little bit about my light wind foiling moth tax video that I uploaded recently, uh, just because there was a lot I wanted to say about that video. Uh, and I could also do a bit of an introduction about who I am. So here is a picture of my first moth. I started moth sailing in 2011, so 12 years ago now. And this is a, a mistress moth. And it was about as cheap as you could get. Uh, at the time, I was desperate to try hydrofoiling. And I think I paid less than £3,000 for this in the end. Uh, and it did the trick. I got foiling. I was hooked. I loved it. Um, so it wasn't too long later when I had to upgrade and buy something a bit more serious, which was the Ninja, a more purpose-designed um, foiling boat where they sort of uh, improved the control systems a lot more with push rods, things that were a bit more reliable than the old cables, uh, throttle cable style they were using before. And uh, this was actually a very quick, very nice boat. Um, lots of fun to learn and kind of did everything I needed to, but I had the option to upgrade to something a bit faster and had a few more of the newer gadgets. So then I moved on to the rocket. So the rocket had a bowsprit to move that wand a bit further forwards um, and it was generally a bit more aero as well, so it didn't have these compression struts on it. Uh, so a bit faster, a bit better performing and just a bit, bit newer in terms of some of the technology that was on that boat. Uh, and then I discovered that this boat was easily getting overtaken by the latest generation of boats that started to have deck sweeper sails and bent booms and uh, a few other uh, advances in, in what, they were, what they were doing, which is why I then got onto the thin air. Um, and this I would say it's actually a little bit worse to sail than my rocket. My rocket felt like a very reliable, solid boat. It just wasn't particularly fast. Um, this thing, lightning quick when it's going, but if it's wavy or too windy, um, I've, I've actually found it quite difficult to sail. Um, so yeah, it's been, a, it's been a difficult couple of years trying to sail this boat, but when you're racing, it's pretty quick. Um, I can't make it go as fast as the top guys. I'm not a top-end sailor. Uh, for example, uh, these are the results of the um, Nationals last year. You see the top of the fleet has some of the best sailors in the world in it. And altogether there are just over 50 people who are racing in this Nationals. And I was just above halfway, so I think I was, um, where am I, 23rd in this one. Not the slowest thin air, which is good to know. Uh, there were a few thin airs in this competition. James was sailing one, um, Ed, Ed was sailing one, and uh, the fastest one here would have been Eddie. Uh, he was pretty much testing them at the time, and he had a new set of uh, super long foils on this one. Um, but yeah, I was pretty pleased with this. This is about where I would expect to be. You know, I'm not a professional sailor. Uh, I don't get to sail every day or even every week, really. Um, so to be in the top half, that is, that is uh, a good place to be for me. So let's look at this video then and why I might want to talk about it a little bit. So I uploaded this video to YouTube, uh, some light wind foiling tacks, and I really like talking about what's going on in these tacks, what's going through my mind when, uh, uh, when I'm going into the tack, what's happening with the boat, the sails and, and my body, uh, how we go through the middle of the tack and what we can do on the exit to try and uh, try to complete it. So if we look on the way in, we always sail moths uh, leaning over on top of us. So we have this uh, wing, we've gone to much higher wing angles uh, in recent years. Moth wings used to be quite flat and they've been, been raising them up a bit. And one of the benefits there is you can uh, get your body weight, which is over here somewhere. I should draw these lines kind of perpendicular to the horizon. Working on a wonky picture is a bit tricky. But your body weight then 
uh, is over here pushing down thanks to gravity, but the lift of the boat, unlike a regular dinghy, so a regular dinghy would be lifted from the hull somewhere, and your leverage is just sort of, well, how long is your wing on your boat? Uh, in a moth, the centre of lift is down here at the foil, and by leaning over, you can get a lot more distance away from that foil. In fact, if you were even leaning away from you, you could imagine that you might end up directly on top of the foil. Um, so leaning over on top of you, imagine your centre of lift is over here somewhere, and you've got all of this lovely distance away from your centre of lift um, to generate all that power with. So that's our default position when we're muscling. When we are coming in to attack, when we're turning towards the wind, or into a jive when we're turning away from the wind, uh, we are also treating this boat a bit like a bike. So our front wheel is going to be um, by this main foil, and our back wheel is going to be back at the rudder. And as we're steering around, uh, we have to lean the boat into the corner, especially when we're going at high speeds, which we're doing most of the time in the moth. So we want to lean into that corner and then steer appropriately for the amount of lean that we have. If we are leaning into the corner and we steer too much, the boat's going to want to fly out of the corner. So say we're steering into the tack, steer too sharply, the boat's going to fly over this way. That may be desirable, we'll talk about that in the middle of the tack in a minute. If we don't lean enough, we steer too gently, we're going to flop over this way and end up with this wing in the water. So steer too much, we flop over, end up with a leeward wing in the water, don't steer enough, we have this windward wing in the water. Uh, so the steering is really important to the balance. Normally with the balance you're thinking about power of the sail, your body weight and how much grip uh, your, your foil is providing. Um, but in moth sailing, we've got this kind of bike effect too. So we're coming into this tack. Uh, what do we want to do? Well, I want the main out a little bit to generate speed because speed is going to be our friend going into the tack. And I am going to steer into the tack with some windward gear. We need to lean into the turn to get that turn both fast and um, balanced. Then when we're in the middle of the turn, we're going to start moving our weight through the boat. Power in the sail is going to start to dip. Uh, we can sheet the sail in if we need a hand getting through that bit of the tack, but most of the time I don't seem to do that. Um, and now, much differently to a jibe, we need to flop the boat over from having this wing lent over to the, the parallel with the water to having this wing being over parallel to the water. So our boat's going to be over here somewhere. That's where we want to be on the exit. Uh, so we want to generate that extra force flopping the boat over. So we're going to, as we're going to gently go in at first, we're going to move our weight across the boat, and then we're going to really turn the boat to the tack. Uh, and hopefully you'll be able to see something like that happening. As we speed up the turn, we're going to hope the boat flops over to this new position, and we're going to sit on this wing and control the steering and the power in the sail from there, which we'll talk about next. So let's just watch that for now, if I can just clear one that way. Lovely. Watch this video. Smashing. So let's go through that a bit slowly, more slowly. Here we're going in with lots of speed. I've freed up my back leg, ready to cross the boat, and I just want to steer in as smoothly as I can uh, with the boat nice and happy. Here it goes, so we've generated that nice gentle curve into this tack. And I'm starting to lose power in the main here, which is the right time to start crossing the boat and start speeding up that turn. So this is the point where the boat's leaning over and I've lost all power in the main now and I really want to speed that turn up and get my way across to the new side. So here we go. There it is. So a, a final thing happens here when we are trying to get that boat on top of us. The sail has now started to power up 
so we can do a huge ease on that sail. This boom is now a long way out and that helps us keep the boat on top of us with lots of power ready to come out of the, out of the tank. And that is pretty much the whole tack. Notice I'm not all the way on the end of the wing. I don't need to hike super hard to exit this tack. Um, if I've come through smoothly enough and um, got the balance so that the boat is somewhat uh, coming over on top of me with that main ease and with that steering, uh, then yeah, hiking out hard isn't necessary. And then from there, it's just a tidy up. Uh, oh yeah, I should mention, while I'm tidying up here, the main, the power in the main is much more important than the steering. So hopefully your boat is relatively neutral, you can let go of the tiller entirely and manage the power in that main sheet with two hands as you swap hands to the tiller. I think that's a relatively common thing to do, I don't think that's just me. Um, yeah, very important to maintain the power. And that's one tack done.